Placing of medical devices on the European market became a challenge. The medical device regulation, the MDR, distinctly raised the bar for manufacturers, for importers and for distributors. This video will help you understanding the European legal framework and the steps you need to take before selling your devices in the European community. At the end of the video, I'll give you a checklist. With this checklist, you can verify whether you fulfilled the regulatory requirements. And this will help you to find the missing parts right away, to avoid unnecessary rework, and to market your products faster and with less hassle. I'm Christian Jona, owner of the Jona Institute, a German-based consultancy firm. Our team assembles auditors, members of standard committees, developers, natural and computer scientists, engineers, and physicians. We support medical device manufacturers in establishing quality management systems and compiling technical files. We plan and perform usability tests both in Germany and the US and offer both on- and off-site trainings. With our help, all of our customers, and we are talking about hundreds, passed audits and approval processes successfully, with no exception. For medical devices, there is in Europe no agency like the European Medicine Agency for Drugs or the FDA in the US that approve products. The manufacturers themselves declare the conformity of their products. They fill out a declaration of conformity and affix the CE mark to their products. However, they must follow a so-called conformity assessment procedure. And dependent of the class of the medical device, this procedure involves a notified body. We'll talk about the classes in a minute. The medical device regulation, the MDR, distinguishes several of these conformity assessment procedures. For all devices, regardless of the class, the manufacturers must compile a technical documentation according to Annex 2. This technical documentation proves that the medical device actually fulfills all safety and performance requirements as described in the first Annex. We'll come back to the technical documentation a little later. Before marketing class 1 devices, these are the most uncritical ones, manufacturers just have to declare the conformity. And Annex 4, respectively Annex 5, describes how to. But this is no major deal. For all other classes, it is a major deal. Already for a class 1 device with a measuring function, or that is sterile, these devices are marked here as class 1 star, a notified body must be involved. Notified bodies are essentially companies like the TÜVs, like BSI, like DECRA or MDCCE that have an accreditation to audit quality and management systems and to review technical files. They act on behalf of national, effectively European authorities. Back to the class 1 star and class 2A medical devices. Manufacturers have two options. Either they mandate the notified bodies to verify each and every single product. Obviously, this only makes sense for very small lot sizes or numbers. Or they have the notified bodies auditing their production quality system. If they pass audit, the manufacturers obtain an annex certificate. For class 2B and class 3 products, additionally, a type examination is required. In other words, not only the production is audited, but also the product, more precisely a representative sample, is tested by the notified body, in addition to the technical file review. This means the notified body just examines the product, typically by testing it. But there is no audit of the development process. Just the result is what counts. However, for medical devices containing software, you cannot ignore the development. It is hard, if not even impossible, to find problems by testing the product. Therefore, the audit of the quality management system must include the development as well. And then we are at Annex 9. Annex 9 describes a full-blown quality management system, including development, including production, and all the other processes, such as post-market surveillance, risk management, etc. And honestly speaking, if your product contains software or is software, you should go this Annex 9 route. At least, if your product does not fall in Class 1. For certain high critical products of class 2B or class 3, there are additional steps required that mandate the involvement of a so-called expert panel in addition to the notified body. With exception for class 1 products, the notified bodies issue annex certificates. These are a prerequisite for declaring the conformity and for affixing the CE mark. Therefore, some manufacturers call the procedure the CE certification, even there is no CE certification. Manufacturers declare conformity themselves. However, an annex certificate is a prerequisite in many cases, as just said. And there is another certification. 
Annex 9, at least partially, and Annex 10 require a quality management system. This quality management system must be audited by notified bodies as well. If the audit has been successful, the notified bodies also issue an ISO 13485 certificate. That means, for medical devices in classes 1 star, 2A, 2B, A3, the manufacturers typically have two certificates, an Annex certificate and an ISO 13485 certificate. However, both are issued based on the same audit. Talking about the classes. As already mentioned, there are four classes, 1, 2A, 2B, and 3, and in a way, class 1 star, which makes it to be 5 classes. In contrast to the FDA, there is no database linking products or product types to a certain class. The Medical Device Directive defines 22 classification rules in Annex 13. These rules consider the criticality, whether the product is invasive, and if yes, for how long. There are rules for active devices and there are rules for devices containing nanomaterials or medicine. If you need any help with classifying your product, just let us know, we're happy to help. There is another open loop, the technical documentation. The technical documentation must allow an assessment whether the essential safety and performance requirements are met. These are described in the first annex. Some examples for these requirements. First and most important, the requirement to perform a risk management, including the definition of risk policy, defining risk acceptance criteria, analyzing and mitigating risks. Another requirement deals with usability engineering. Another one deals with electrical safety and electromagnetic compatibility. Then software lifecycle processes have to be followed and the software must be verified and validated according to the state of the art, and so forth. Accordingly, manufacturers compile files like the risk management file, the usability file, the software documentation, etc. To give manufacturers a guidance how to perform a proper risk management or usability engineering, the medical device regulation, the MDR, provides two instruments to prove compliance. First, the harmonized standards, and second, the common specifications. As of releasing the MDR, there was neither a standard harmonized nor a common specification being released. But it is more than likely that this is going to happen. For example, we expect the ISO 4971 being harmonized for risk management, the IEC 62366-1 for usability engineering, the IEC 62304 for software, and the IEC 6601 family, so to say, for medical electrical devices. The typical step to market your medical device in Europe are the following. First, describe the medical purpose and intended use of your device. Second, based on this, you determine the class of your device. Third, pick a conformity assessment procedure that suits this class. Fourth, if the class is not class 1, establish a quality management system and have a notified body auditing and certifying it. Then, regardless what the class is, compile the technical documentation compliant with the respective harmonized standards or common specifications. We haven't talked about it so far, but you also need a post-market surveillance and vigilance system. These are the steps you need to go. If you like to, then download our checklist right away. It is more comprehensive than this list here, and it will give you an overview on all the documents you must compile. Thereby, you won't miss a document, you'll avoid unnecessary rework, and you'll market your product faster and with less hassle. If you need any help, just let us know. All the companies that we support, as mentioned, these are hundreds, successfully mastered the medical device approval processes. Contact us, you are not alone. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to leave your comments below. 